Hello and welcome to another video from Fantasy Football Scout. We've got a bit of extra time this week, so we're putting out a little bit uh, of different content video-wise. And I'm joined by Neil, who is on his free hit this week, and a lot of other people are on the free hit. I think there's something like over 30% of the top 10K still have this chip, um, which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go through Neil's team in just a second. How are you doing today, Neil? Not bad, Andy. Thank you. Yeah, uh, it's nice that, um, as you said there, we've got a bit of extra time this week. I can't think last time we had a, a full seven days in between deadlines. So um, yeah, we'll be bringing back a lot more content this week, actually. The sort of things like Scout Squad um, and a few other regular articles that we've had to sort of temporarily shelve when the deadlines are coming around every two or three days. So yeah, a bit of, bit of leg room this week, not just for content, but for me to plan my team for 38 as well which as you see is going to be a free hit squad yeah it's going to be good i think uh, like i said a lot of people are doing it this week at least that's what it feels like when you're on twitter as uh someone without it i feel like a, a little bit behind the curve but obviously there's a lot of players that have done well that are still good options for this week so i don't think we're going to see completely different teams but there are um, some differences for sure. So I'm just going to bring your uh, team up. So basically, Neil's got kind of two drafts currently. And obviously, caveats as normal. This could change before next Sunday. We still haven't seen all the matches and stuff like that. Uh, but I think there's a lot of continuity in these teams that you're going to start seeing. So um, yeah, so this is the first the first team. Then there's one with a few changes, which we'll look at in just a second. Um, but I, yeah, I'll just ask you, ask you a few questions about it that kind of stuck out to me um, straight away. And I'm sure some of this is like team value reasons but yeah. um, it'd be good to get you know your thoughts about whether you're concerned and stuff so like straight away at the back I see you've got Van Dyke and not Robertson yeah. or Trent Alexander-Arnold um, yeah. is, is that a worry? Big time yeah I, I did have a draft with Robertson in um, I doubt I can stretch to Alexander-Arnold if I want to afford all the big hitters further forward but yeah, as you alluded to there, um, my team values what hurt, what's hurting me at the moment. Um, obviously, there's the hack early in the season, but it, it's it's partly my fault as well for waiting so long into the week to make transfers, which is my approach to wait for press conferences and things like that before making my move. And obviously, that costs you valuable money at the end of the season. So I can't afford the, a lot of the big heavy hitters, at least not all of them together, that I've seen in some other free hit squads. So it's about compromises. Now, I, I could probably free up 0.5 to get Robertson, I think. Um, there's other areas of the team I can downgrade or, or make cheaper alternatives. Um, but yeah, I, I I think for 38, I'm less concerned about people starting than I was, say, I'm a wild card, which is why I went, went for Van Dijk um, a couple of weeks after the resumption. So I thought Alexander Arnold would get a bench, and he did. Not that it really mattered at the end of the day because Liverpool lost a clean sheet anyway, but um, I knew Van Dijk would be nailed at the back. He's never been benched in, I think, two seasons. Um, so that's why I had him in my team up until this point. For 30 years, I'd love one of the fullbacks because I think Newcastle are... It's not so much on the beach, we're sort of in the hospital, really, because we've got so many injuries, especially at centre-half. Um, you'll see one of the, um, the youngsters there in my in my draft team at the minute he's purely bench fodder but he might even get a game in 38 possibly even in 37 because we've got five of our six centre halves out for one reason or another and um, we've only really got Fernandez left of the senior option so he could be uh, an emergency playing option not that I'd want to play him in 38 but um, yeah uh, ideally if I can rejig the forward options, then it would definitely be one of Robertson or Alexander-Arnold over Van Dijk. You just get the feeling Alexander-Arnold is due a big, big score because he's kind of struggled um, ever since they won the league for returns at either end of the pitch. And I just think the Castle are, they won't offer much at either end of the pitch in this fixture. And I think it's one of the, arguably, um, fixtures that's been overlooked slightly. I mean, I know people are still interested in Liverpool assets, but I think there's been a lot more talk about Man City, home and Norwich, for example. And I do think Liverpool away in the Castle is actually a better fixture than it would have been about two months ago. 
Yeah, I, I completely agree. I like without going into my team too much. I, I'm strongly considering bringing in a Liverpool attacker for that, and I already have Trent. Uh, because I do I agree. I think everyone's going to be drawn to that Man City fixture for very good reasons. It's Norwich at home. And Man yeah. City are obviously a really good team. But uh, I do think that Newcastle fixture might get overlooked a little bit. Interestingly, since I think you're right about Trent, it would be it would seem unlikely for him to just not do anything now before the end of the season. But Robertson has been very good uh, since yeah. the restart. So obviously you're gambling that he can do better than Trent. But I think that, that might not be the worst gamble for, for just a one-week... Um, I guess pun essentially if you've got a free hit. So yeah, Van Dyke not a bad option, of course. But yeah, if you can stretch to Robertson or or Trent, much better. Are you just really quick, guys, because you've already touched on it. Are you worried about? Um, obviously, you've got very very cheap bench options um, who may or may not play. Are you worried about that, or is it just a case you're gonna if you know if one of your eleven doesn't play at all, that's just extremely unlucky this week, especially with five subs. Well, one of the emergency options might even start. So that's Williams, who dropped to 3.8 million last night. Um, we're recording this on, on Monday morning, by the way. So this was Sunday evening. Uh, he's dropped to 3.8, which means he's the cheapest player in the game. Uh, and he might even start. It depends how, how short he is. I've not heard much from Solskjaer since the FA Cup semi, but he wasn't fit for that. Um, and Williams started. So we'll see how that pans out over the next week. So I'll be very happy to have him as a, a, as a first sub. Um, to come on for one of the back three. But my hope is, I don't know how uh, feasible this will be, but um, if we do get any kind of indication of early team news, uh, then I w- won't even need much of a bench. But it's always handy to have one or two playing subs just in case. You know, someone could pull out in a line uh, in their warm up, for example, but I don't need a full bench. I don't need three playing substitutes and a, and a free hit 38 squad. So, um, yeah, I mean it's a it's a bit of a concern, but this is the area to make a sacrifice in. I think I don't see that many clean sheets around, and where there are clean sheets, I'd probably want the attacking assets instead. So Man City v Norwich, for example, you think is an absolute stone cold certainty for a shutout. But I, would I want Mendy or Laporte over a triple up further forward? I mean, I, I might, I might as one option, um, but. Um, yeah, one of them, one of the clean sheet opportunities looks like Burnley home to Brighton. And luckily, they're blessed with a lot of cheap options in their defence. And they're pretty easy to predict in terms of a starting eleven because they haven't got any other players fit or still in contact with the club. So, yeah, the likes of Barzi and Peters, well, I think have both risen in price since the weekend. I mean, they're both under 4.5 million. Um, and I might start both of them. Uh, and, you know... As Peter's proved, he can chip in with an attack and return as well. I'm not expecting much other than clean sheets, but um, I don't think I'll be alone in, in, in considering a double up or even more on Burnley's defence in the final week, purely because of how cheap they are. And, of course, they've got the track record of keeping sheet, clean sheets and are going for this clean sheet record with Nick Pope as well, as we've heard from from a number of their squad. So, um, yeah, defence is, is, looks ropey on paper. But um, as we'll discuss in a second, I, I need to free up the cash to spend further forward. Yeah, I, I actually think that defence looks perfectly fine. Obviously, we've already discussed like Robertson or, or Trent would probably be better over Van Dyke. Yeah. Not that Van Dyke can't score, of course, but I really think um, free hitters have not got it easy, but they've got some decisions that are pretty much... It feels like they're already made for them. Like Brandon Williams, 3.8 a massive opportunity you might as well just stick him in even if he doesn't play he's still a good option for your team because he frees up money and then Burnley defence just what more could you ask for than a home game against Brighton for a team that's what they do is keep clean sheets and they've got such cheap defenders that you you said I think I think so many people on free hit will be doubling and maybe even tripling up do, do you think that um Obviously, again, team uh, team value and the prices are, are a big thing. But do you think actually Martinez, in his own right, forgetting about the prices, is, is possibly even as good a chance of a clean sheet as Pope? Or if you had the money, would you just go to Pope? No, I think I'm, I, I, my resistance to tripling up in defence is something um, I've long had. I did it in my uh, wild card, on my unlimited transfer squad for Game 30. It was horrible watching Sheffield United um, just, you know trying to will on the full-time whistle when I had a triple up on a clean sheet. I mean, it's great when it comes off, but it's a horrible watch for 90 minutes. So I, I don't like tripling up on defenders. Um, and whilst there are options there, um, like Barsley and Peters, Long as well as another one, Kevin Long, 
Uh, I do think I I can downgrade Pope to Martinez, still get a good chance of a clean sheet, but also have representation from the Burnley defence as well. So I'm quite happy with that. Martinez, I'll have to keep an eye on Martinez because I think Leno was due to be back in training before the end of the season. Um, I haven't heard a medical bulletin from Arsenal, I think, uh, before, when was it, last Friday or something like that. So we'll see how that pans out this week. They've also got Game Week 37 picture to come. And then we'll see if he's in any sort of shape to play for Game Week 30, yeah, because that could throw a spanner in the works. But he, he's been he's been playing so well, Martin is. I do wonder if he's now got the shirt to lose um, between the posts because he's, he's not really made any ricks that I can think of ever since he's come in. Um, had another good game in the FA Cup semi-final at the weekend. So, uh, fingers crossed, Leno doesn't make a miraculous recovery. But um, even if he does... I do wonder if Martinez is now the sort of temporary number one, at least till the end of the season. Yeah, no, I um, I, I kind of agree. I I think it would be I I wouldn't be surprised if Leno next season comes back as the number one, but I do think it would be very harsh yeah. to not give Martinez that last game because he's waited so long for a chance to like get starts. I think I think I heard something like he's only had less than thirty starts or something in ten years or something something yeah. crazy like that. Anyway. Uh, and you're right, he hasn't put a foot wrong. In fact, he's probably gone under the radar how good he's been uh, since he came in. So yeah, I, th- I think it would be harsh. I think um, we- we'll probably hear about that, like you said. So we'd have to wait for news. But yeah, I think he's I think he's done enough to kind of deserve uh, deserve that last game, especially if he plays against um, against Aston Villa, which I'm sure he will. Uh, let's let's move on to the attack. Maybe a little bit more <laughs> more interesting. This is where people are going to spend their money. So what stands out to me straight away, and I think this is going to be a common theme with free hit teams is obviously everyone's kind of doubled or tripled up on Man United right now but in free hit teams that's kind of reduced and I've, what I've seen a lot actually and you've done it as well is gone for Martial as the single man well apart from Williams of course but in attack the single um, attacker over Fernandez. is that again is that a price thing or do you just think at the moment Martial's looking a bit better a bit of both I think yeah I can, I can make a bit of a saving by downgrading Fernandez to Martial um I've had second thoughts having watched Leicester yesterday, of course. I mean, I don't know if that game will repeat itself on Sunday. Um, I mean, could you see Solskjaer sitting back and just soaking up the pressure? I mean, he has done it before. He's, he's had a reputation as being a good counter-attacking team pre-Fernandez, um, where Solskjaer would set them up in what a wing-back system and then just hit teams on the, on the break. And they had a really good record against the big six. But has... Have United evolved since then? Will Have they got that in their locker now just to sit back and let Leicester have possession like what Spurs did yesterday? Because it it seems to be a good tactic because um, Leicester's high line was just caught out again and again and again. And I was just imagining Martial running it, Ryan Bennett uh, in, in the sort of right-hand side of Leicester's back three. Uh, he may have lost his place now after yesterday, but um, it made me rethink about ditching the attack assets. So I've got a triple, uh, sorry, I've got a triple United at the moment, two of which are attackers, um, Fernandez and Greenwood. So I've got rid of both of them in this free, free hit draft. But um, yeah, I did mainly think twice watching that yesterday. Martial, I think, is, I mean, obviously he's playing out of position up front. Um, I've watched him through my fingers over the last few weeks because I had him in a draft and then of my wildcard team and then took him out. And of course, he's absolutely banged since then. I think he's on a par with Fernandez in terms of points per game uh, since the restart. So, um, yeah, I mean it's it's flexible. I can I can go back up with Fernandez if I want. I could even draft him back in if I think Leicester are there for the taking, uh, and they might need to go for the jugular. They might need to win that match to to overhaul United. Um, so uh, yeah, Martial at the moment. Um, I like the look of his underlying stats. I like the look of him. Uh, in person as well, like he's he's got a sort of swagger back. I know he, he can look a bit um, uninterested in time, but I think that's that's just just who he is. I think he's, he's he can turn it on at the flick of a switch. Um, so yeah, he's he's my sole attacking representative at the minute, and that's obviously one of the reasons why I've got Williams. I can afford to uh, have a non-playing United defender if I'm not going for a triple up and attack, um, and he, even. Uh, if I think the worst of Leicester's defence, I doubt whether I'll be going with three United f- forwards or midfielders. Two, I think, maximum um, for that fixture. But uh, yeah, maybe think again watching that yesterday because it was a bit of a bit of a horror show at the back. There could have been more goals as well. Basically, just um, I just envisaged Pogba playing those 
Harry Winks take balls from deep and then Rashford and Martial running onto them. So um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a really option, tri- I think. yeah, it's a really tricky one for free hitters now because. I don't think people expected Leicester to lose how they did yesterday. They did now. They did ch- kind of change things around in the second half, and they weren't um, yeah. as open. Um, but yeah, I think that that probably made people rethink a little bit. So it's kind of I think non free hitters like me are really hoping that Man United turn it on again because I think people will go without or, or at least just have one, um, and that could hopefully help. But I mean, obviously we've got to see the rest of the games. But that game could be really interesting because if Man United beat West Ham. However many they beat them by, they're ahead of Leicester on goal difference because right now they're equal because Leicester lost so heavily, um, 3-0. So the, the goal difference is equal. So if Man United do beat West Ham, which isn't guaranteed, of course, but one, two or three goals, then that's how far in front they are of Leicester. So Leicester yeah. then have to beat us by that amount. So if they're going to try and get Champions League, they're going to have to go for it. Um, and if we can pick them off on the counter, and we obviously have the players to do that, Martial, Rashford, are super, super quick players, then, yeah, it could be good. But a lot depends on that West Ham game. If Man United lose it, then suddenly I wouldn't be so sure about um, having a triple up because that could be a super cagey game. So yeah, we'll have to we'll have to wait for that result. But yeah, no, I, I fully agree with Marshall. I think he's looked really good. I think Fernandez looked really tired, but the thing is, he's not going to get rested. We just know that. Um, yeah. So we we know he's going to play. So that's not an issue. Um, but yeah, I think Marshall's looked sharp. A lot of people are saying about home and away form, but I think we've only I think he's only blanked in the two away games, and one of them was the first game back against Spurs. So I wouldn't really pay too much attention. Like in recent games, um, he's looked really good. So yeah, great option. Um, Mane in ahead of Salah. Um, again, do you think do you think he's can match him in a single game week, or again is it just uh, just kind of a money thing? Money thing, really. First and foremost, um, but he can match him. I mean, he, he's proven that already. I've had him for the past two game weeks, uh, and I got a goal from him against Arsenal. So yeah, you can definitely match Salah on, on any given match day. Um, of course, it's just it's a bit of a, a bit of a crapshoot, really. You just you just pick your choose your weapon and then and let fate decide the rest. Really, I suppose it, it, Manny could bag a hat trick easily. Salah could do the same. Uh, and you'd be left cursing your luck like you chose the wrong one, but. Yeah, Manny saves me 0.3 million, which doesn't seem like a lot, but um, over the course of a, a squad of 15, that all adds up, and it could it could mean the difference between, for example, um, me going uh, with Robertson over Van Dyke or something like that if I keep reallocating funds elsewhere. So, um, yeah, Manny at the moment, I think I'm loath to take him off as well because I've had him for the past two game weeks, um, and previously I've had the mentality of you pick your Liverpool asset and stick with it and just ride the blanks and you know they'll roughly finish not too far apart in terms of points at the end of the season. Um do think Salah's due, mind. He's, he's had a lot of chances over the past two game weeks and, and blanked despite that. Um, but yeah, I wonder if Milner's back for game week 30. Yeah, that's something. He, he came, I think he's due back in midweek. If he gets a, a start in the... In the Final game, then you would think maybe he's on penalties. Yeah, exactly. I can't see Salah. I can't see Salah catching Vardy now. I don't think they'll be trying to help him um, in the race for the Golden Boot by that point, um, unless he goes crazy against Chelsea. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think it'll be Manny um, over Salah, unless I've got the luxury of suddenly finding myself with an extra 0.3 million, which I doubt very much given my uh, poor team value. I actually don't think Mane over Salah, even in general, even if you had the money, is that bad an option for a few reasons. One, he's way less owned, especially where you yeah. are going for in the top 10K. It's like 6% or 8%, I think, versus like 45 nearly. So he, yeah, if that. he can beat Salah, which we've seen plenty of times, that's a huge rank swing straight away. Uh, and it's the, the pattern of underlying stats are very similar to last year, where Salah's getting or taking way more shots. But it didn't really matter last year either because Mane just took better quality shots usually. And in terms of big chances, it's like six for Mane versus eight for Salah. So there's not a huge amount of difference in it. Um, so, yeah, and I think Mane's going to be hungry for goals as well. He's not going to want Salah three or four goals ahead of him by the end of the season. Oh. So those two, I'm telling you, like I know there's a big thing made about them passing to each other. I think it's probably overplayed a little bit. But in that game, they have anywhere near around the box. They are shooting a bit like Danny Ings yesterday. As soon as he got that ball... I knew he was going to try and carve out a goal. You could just see it. He's not. He wasn't going to pass at all, um, and he went for it. And Manny and Salah are going to do that time and time again, especially against that Newcastle defence. So, I, I mean, I, I would probably pick Salah. I think just because I, that's yeah. who I'm always drawn to. But 
I genuinely think there's a there's a reason to go Mane instead. There's plenty of reasons to go Mane instead of Salah. So I don't think that's a bad call at all. Um, I think also he's he's good in the air as well. And and Newcastle we've seen throughout the past two seasons where very susceptible to um, attempts from set players, um, aerial balls, and if we're down so many centre halves, then I think Mane could prosper in that regard as well. So yeah, another, that's another consideration. Yeah, definitely. Good option. Uh, let's talk about Man City then. So, obviously, triple up against Norwich at home um, is a pretty easy call. Are you happy with the players you got? I suppose the two players you haven't got, Jesus, who we're going to look at in a minute because yeah. he is in your second draft, uh, yeah. and Raheem Sterling as well. He's looked really yeah. sharp, plenty of goals. Um, are you, do you think you're going to maybe change it up a bit, or are you happy with these uh, these three? I'd love Sterling. I think, I'd, ideally, I'd like him alongside De Bruyne, but obviously, given the team value, it's going to be a bit of a tough ask. You're sacrificing a lot of players elsewhere. Um, Jesus, definitely. Um, I think I've eaten my words regarding him because I thought, at the start of this, I thought, well, A, he's not going to start every game um, because he can play Sterling or Bernardo as a false nine. And B, he's just not as clinical as Aguero, which I think is true, but nevertheless, with the volume of chances of City are creating, then it doesn't have to be. And he's still scoring week in, week out. So, um, yeah, Possibly moving for Hezo Sterling. I mean, it would require probably losing De Bruyne, which is possible because at the moment I've got uh, in this draft that you're seeing on the screen, I've got Mares, David Silva, and De Bruyne. Now, two of those are sort of number eights, the, the sort of the deeper players. You'd want more representation from the front three, really, in an ideal world. Um, I know De Bruyne and Silva can can still hold on any given day, and this might be a swan song. I mean, I could see him featuring in. Uh, a couple of Champions League games off the bench, but I, he doesn't. I think his legs have perhaps gone a bit in terms of playing the real elite European clubs. And I, I can't really see Guardiola starting him on too many occasions in the in the remaining Champions League games. Um, might he be given penalties as well as a as a sort of sentimental gesture? If City did get one. I don't know. Um, he's it's not an ideal pick, really. I think if I had unlimited money, which you know. All of us would wish for. Then it would probably be Mares, Sterling, De Bruyne, or Mares, Mares, Sterling, Jesus. Um, but again, Sterling just that bit more costly, and uh, where my funds are at the moment, then he may have to be the sacrificial lamb if I'm looking at someone like Aubameyang and attack or Mane if I'm Liverpool. So um, yeah, I'd, I'd love Sterling. Now he's, he's he's looked at such a good nick since he came back and. Um, De Bruyne could be the could be the one to make way if I do go for Sterling, but I don't I doubt I can accommodate both. Yeah, it's tough. I I've got Kevin De Bruyne in my actual team, and I don't have Sterling. Sterling's really the one that I want. The thing with De Bruyne is he doesn't, and he hasn't recently either. Doesn't really take that many shots inside the box. So obviously he can rack up the assists, and you know I'm sure he'll get a couple before the end of the season. But I think for in terms of goals, of course he can score from out the box, outside the box, free kicks, and all sorts of stuff. Um, he's got all you know ways of getting points, but um, I feel like maybe relying on penalties for him to get goals. And if he doesn't get them, he's going to have to get a few assists to rack up the kind of score that I think Sterling and and kind of Jesus could get. So it's not really to like write off De Bruyne because that would be crazy. Um, but I think for a, a one game week where you're going for kind of an explosive score, yeah, I would I personally would prefer Sterling as well. Uh, but I have that same situation in my team. It's just that extra money because it is like a million. It's not, um, yeah. you know, it's not a small amount of money. So, yeah, I like those options. We'll talk about Jesus in a second because I, I really like him. Uh, and obviously, again, we should say the the Watford team or the team Man City Power against Watford is going to play a huge part in our in our thinking for for game week 38 as well. Like with David Silva, the penalties thing is really interesting because if you strongly, you know, anyone out there strongly believes that David Silva will get penalties, then straight away that makes De Bruyne um, a slightly worse option. Again, he's still obviously great, but it would make him slightly worse if he's not on those penalties. I, I don't know. Joe thinks the same. Joe thinks David Silva could maybe get penalties. I just, he could, and, and I think the team would probably make him take it rather than him wanting it because he's not really, yeah. you know, I saw David talking about like John Terry going off on the 26th minute or trying <laughs> to. Like David Silva's not that player. He strikes me as yeah. play 90 minutes, get off the pitch, maybe go and have a glass of wine after the game or whatever. <laughs> he's not, he's not going to be milking it. Obviously, there's no fans there either. Um, so yeah it's an interesting one but triple up on Man City obviously is um, a great shout that everyone's going to go for let's quickly talk about the front line uh, I, guess, I guess two things one Danny Ings is there any worry about the fact they're playing Sheffield United and with Aubameyang 
Is there any of you, uh, any part of you that would maybe consider Kane instead for the same price, I think? Yes, to both questions. Yeah, In- Ings at home to Sheffield United. Um, I'm still not sold on, really. Um, he can score against any kind of opposition. He's proven that already this season. Um, but yeah, there are better fixtures out there, I think. And it just depends what Sheffield United turn up because the one that we've seen since they had their first choice back five back, with the exception of last weekend, against Leicester, oh, sorry, last midweek. Um, they've been really solid. Um, and space is going to be at the premium. And he, yeah, I, I do think there are better options out there. He's just in such good form at the minute. He just needs a half chance. We, we saw that yesterday against, um, who were they playing? Bournemouth. Uh, Bournemouth, yeah. Um, of course, he missed his big chance from the penalty spot. But he's, his goal was, you know, opportunistic. And he's had four of his six goals since the restart of, had like an XG of, of less than 0.06, um, which is like minuscule. But he, he's, his conversion rate and his ability to convert those half chances into goals is is unparalleled, really, perhaps with the exception of Aubameyang and Vardy. Um, so he just needs a second, a half space, and he's, he's on, the, on the score sheet. Um, but I can't see Sheffield United conceding a half-full, especially after how they performed against Leicester. They're going to have a reaction. Yes, they've got a game in between then, um, but Wilder is um, livid when they don't play well, and I can imagine him reading the riot act after that Leicester game. So, yeah, he's potentially one for the chopping block. Um, I could downgrade him. I mean, I could really go cheap and attack. Downgrade him for like a Greenwood, maybe, um, and then reinvest that into, into midfield, but um, that will really upset the balance, I think, in the, in the front line. Aubameyang... Um, I wasn't expecting Arsenal to make the FA Cup final, so there is that. So they'll be playing that, I think, what is it, six days after game week 38? Yeah. Um, I do think he might get, if he is going to get a rest, then he might get that uh, against um, whoever they're playing in 37, Aston Villa. Um, because they've obviously just been in FA Cup action uh, on Saturday. Bamiang did get a rest in game week 36. Um, but yeah, he he's a performance against Man City in that cup semi final was was enough for me to sort of put him in my squad. But at the same time, them qualifying for the final does leave a bit of a doubt in my mind. And then I haven't seen Kane yesterday, uh, who's got Crystal Palace in, in 38, and they're in pretty dire nick. They played a lot better against United, admittedly. Um, but still six losses in a row. They've still not conceded, uh so you're not kept a clean sheet in in that time when previously they were one of the better defensive teams from the mid-table bunch. They're not great at keeping clean sheets against the the bigger teams either. Um, I think all of their clean sheets have been sort of from bottom half teams this season. So, um, yeah, the way Kane's playing, uh, as I've written the scout notes this morning, he's he's not uh, the number nine of of yesteryear, but he's kind of a a nine and a half now. He's still doing the dropping deep bits, um, as we saw for Sun's goal, or the own goal rather. Um, But he's still at the same time, popping up in advanced areas as well. So uh, I poo-pooed him at the start of this resumption. I said there were better Spurs options elsewhere. I, thought, I said Spurs, a son would outscore him, but he's left me more egg on my face, really. He's, he's, he's um, back-to-back double-digit holes. Um, he's not obviously not going to catch Vardy now in the golden boot race, but I don't think that really matters to him. I think it's just nah. the fun of scoring goals is what drives him. So, yeah, it's an option. It's an option. Because uh, I haven't got any Spurs representation at the minute, and again, a bit like Liverpool away at Newcastle, not the not the tough fixture it would have been um, midway through the season, maybe, because Palace are um, not so much on the beach, but they've already uh, departed from the departures lounge, I think, and they're they're on the flight. Um, and yeah, they've they've down the likes of Van Arnholt, they're down Cahill as well, who's their best centre half. Um, so yeah, a few things to think about. Yeah, I, I said um, on the I said on the scoutcast that I prefer Kane to Aubameyang. Obviously, not seen Aubameyang play against Villa yet, um, but Kane getting off with two goals has started well. I, I do. It's a tough one because Watford obviously sat the manager, so we don't know what kind of um, will they get like a new manager bounce. Will Aubameyang get limited minutes because the FA Cup final is coming? We just don't know. Uh, and Spurs is um, Kane's getting so many big chances as well. 
um, mm. like, like way more than Sun. That that could be like a huge fixture. Plus, as well, he's he's definitely a ninety minute man, and he hasn't had. A, I don't think he's had a penalty since restart. Uh, I could be wrong about that. So short. Sure, I mean, he's kind of. It feels like he's due one at the moment. Um, so yeah, I still like Kane, but I, I can't really argue about Bamiang because he looks so good against City, uh, and there's no reason he can't do that against Watford. I will just say, just just in case anyone else is in a similar position with team value, like not having Danny Ings is like such a big call because he's so well owned. Uh, but yeah, Greenwood could be a good option, although he's not getting a huge amount of chances in the last few games. The other one, of course, is last week's phenomenon, which is Chris Wood against Brighton. That would free up one point five million. Um, which could re- be re- redistributed. So, yeah, if, if anyone else is in a similar position, that's something to think about. Uh, I'll just quickly bring up your other team because uh, mm. it is pre- it is pretty similar. Um, I think the core of it is still still the same. But you've got Jesus instead of David Silva, and one of the ways you funded that, or pretty much the way you funded that, is um, Lacazette in for Aubameyang. So, do you think he's a genuine option, Lacazette? Um, not really. <laughs> I think it, it depends if I get any kind of heads up on a on a team news. So, a Lacazette or Ideally, in Ketia, if they're starting in 38, um, I don't think they're as good an option as Aubameyang, not by long stretch. But, um, for example, see if in Ketia, we got a heads up that he's starting in, in 38. Now, that's immediately a saving of, what, 6.5 million. Um, if I had, say, Kane and Nketiah as my front, or Jesus and Nketiah as my front two, and then a, a real power five midfield, upgrade, what, David Silva to Sterling, something like that. Then that's a possibility. Um, Jesus, I do like, as I discussed before, I, much like Kane, I wasn't sure about him at the start of this run, but um, he's just every time I predict the benching for him in the team music continues to start. I, th- I can't remember, is it six or seven now when a Roy started? Yeah, in something game? like that. Yeah, yeah, ridiculous. Um, Pep occasionally managing him in the form of early substitutions, although not so in the FA Cup semi final, which maybe he'll get his rest out of the way in 37. Um, but they are there out of the FA Cup final now, and they'll have, I think, 12 days between Norwich and uh, Real Madrid. So I can't see Pep Reston players for Norwich. He'll perhaps manage their minutes in the form of early substitutions, but he, he said himself that he wants players to be fresh, uh, sorry, in, in um, uh, with a bit of momentum behind them before going to that Champions League quarter final. So I think most of the big guns are going to play in that game against Norwich. Maybe take off uh, a couple of the heavy hitters after 60 minutes or so. But you think by that point, they would have racked up a few goals anyway. Um, so yeah, Jesus is an option. Uh, he's cheaper than the likes of Kane and Aubameyang as well. Um, and yeah, not for one minute do I think uh, Lacazette is better than Aubameyang. But, but again, a saving of what 1.7 million um, he's proven that he can score goals. I think he's more like a six, seven, eight pointer rather than someone who could really haul. But um, yeah, to to do that, I've to accommodate Jesus in the front line. I've I think I've sacrificed too. Is it um, Silva? And yeah. gone for An- Antonio. It was got a good fixture as well. I think my only concern about West Ham is that they are now safe, almost certainly, not mathematically yet, but they're almost certainly safe and. Um, Motivation, perhaps, in this year in game week 38. Villa will be playing for something. Have been better defensively since the restart as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not convinced about Antonio. Somebody asked me in, on Twitter this morning if, um, I think it was James Mason, so I'll, uh, I'll give a shout to him, if I've got any cast iron nailed on picks for, for 38. I think my only one is Brandon Williams. Oh, wow. Um, I think he's the only one I'm absolutely certain about. <laughs> There's so many options and so many different permutations you can you can do, even with a team value as, as rubbish as mine. That I'm not I'm not set on any of the picks like you see on the screen at the moment, which is a bit of a worry because I know come 30 year I'll get to kickoff time and the players I had in this initial draft will be all banging while I watch um, Lacazette come off after 56 minutes yeah. for a one pointer. Well, so the players you got there, so Antonio, I've just taken him out, but that's not to say I won't bring him back because he's like statistically, like I keep saying, he's been the best player since restart. Like his underlying stats are ridiculous. Even if you take Norwich out of the equation, he's yeah. still really good. Jesus, I really like. I think there's every chance he starts in 38. And obviously if he doesn't start in 37, I might even captain him. I think he's that good an option. I really, really like him. He gets so many chances. He also creates plenty of chances as well. 
Uh, and I've said this before, like people can say it just happens. It doesn't matter. They all they all count um, the same from FPL. And really quickly, just on Lacazette, so I've just looked it up. Last four matches, because uh, obviously he's been back playing a bit because Enketi got um, uh, suspended. So versus Aubameyang, Lacazette, three big chances. Aubameyang, only one. And bearing in mind, Lacazette in that same time has played 75 less minutes. Um, so three big chances versus one. They've both created three chances. Shots inside the box is five to Aubameyang, four to Lacazette. Lacazette's slightly higher expected goal involvement as well. So on their day, if he does start at home, I don't think he's actually that bad a shout. I mean, in a one-game shootout, same as Mane versus Salah, I think usually you'd back Aubameyang, uh, but there's nothing to say Lacazette not, might not do it. So other people might be considering a very similar downgrade. I think I'd probably... The only thing with Lacazette, I think... If you're not someone that maybe you're on a different time zone or something and you can't wait around for team news, uh, yeah. I would definitely back Aubameyang to start. And Lacazette probably yeah. given the form, but I don't know if I'd be 100% confident. But if you're around for it and we get early team news, then yeah, I don't think that's the worst downgrade. All right, cool. I will leave it there. There's loads of ideas. And obviously, we talked about loads of players that um, other people are going to be looking at. If you want to go and find out other member stats, like the ones I've just read out for Lacazette and Aubameyang, there's a three-day free trial at the moment. So go and... Uh, check that out and obviously plenty more tinkering to come I'm sure Neil's uh, team will be slightly different before Game Week 38 actually starts but we will be doing Breakfast Club still on Saturday uh, even though the deadline's on Sunday and Neil will be on um, so he'll he'll yep. show us what the uh, the current draft looks like I say thanks very much Neil for joining me thanks Andy see you everybody cheers everyone make sure to like the video subscribe if you're new around here and we will catch you again tomorrow cheers all <laughs>